All right, hello and welcome again to um, the Christian Basics series here. Pastor John here, and uh, we're going to be looking at today at the doctrine of sin and salvation. Uh, the doctrines of sin and salvation. So I have a verse here uh, for you. <coughs> I'm going to read from the Bible. Jesus answered them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. God bless the reading of his word. Let's look 5, 31 and 32. So, <clears throat> all right. So here in this verse, we get a good little compact glimpse at sin and salvation. Right? We may wonder what is sin and what is salvation. We would learn about <clears throat> all of those, but how, how do they connect? So here... In this passage we just read, Jesus is talking to a Pharisee, a religious leader at the time. Um, he, he's responding to their challenges. And, and so um, what Jesus is doing here, he's exposing the, um, <clears throat> the Pharisees, um, not all, but some uh, Pharisees' false view of themselves. Right? They're thinking of themselves as righteous when they are not. Right? So that's the bottom line. And uh, Christ's call here then is um, part of his mission. Um, I re re uh, repeat here, I have come to call those who know they are sinners and need to repent. So, who is that? Those are the people at the time um, who don't think of themselves um, not just better, but uh, we know as broken sinners we are all in need of repentance. Right, so basically, we have Jesus' call here um, to um, to us, to the Pharisees them at the time, and also to us, all people, to acknowledge our sin, that is our broken sin nature, to repent and to turn to Jesus uh, for salvation, which only He offers. That's it, briefly, right? So we're gonna look here <clears throat> in these doctrines. Um, what the Bible tells us about sin and salvation, and uh, how how does repentance come into all of this, right? So what is sin, and why does it matter? So someone may say, or you've made somebody may have said that, um, oh, I'm not a sinner. Uh, I never did this or that, or I've never killed anyone or stolen anything. And likewise, well, okay, that's that's something, right? But um, the Bible tells us um, a little bit more about that. So um, if that is true, whoever says that, right? Um, this is a bit harsh, but um, whoever says or claim, makes such a claim basically has just called God a liar. Oh, why? Because the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 8 to 9, um, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. All right? So I repeat, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. All right? So that's just something to understand. Um, has to do with our, our fallen, broken sin uh, nature. We're all broken sinners, and uh, we have this sin nature in us, and um, only Jesus can help us with that. So, but however, as the verse goes on, that's the first letter of John, not the Gospel of John, but the first letter of John, 1 John 1, 8 to 9, I encourage you to read it, is um, that he, uh, the Bible tells us, if we confess our sins to him, that is Jesus, <clears throat> some translations say if we confess our sins, but it means to, if we confess our sins to Jesus, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us um, from all unrighteousness. God bless the reading of his word. So that's our call, to confess and repent. And um, so if we say we've not sinned, right, um, that's not good because we, um, uh, we basically challenge God and call him a liar. And we haven't understood, uh, maybe probably understood who Jesus is and also the nature of sin. All right, all right then. So what is sin, right? We, uh, sin is, is um, 
it comes from the Greek. Uh, the, the doctrine of sin is called hamartiology. <laughs> there is like a theological word for you, but that is basically the study of sin. So the Bible tells us that um, sin is, is transgressing or rebelling against God's laws. And that's a form of moral evil. Um, again, as I said, there's more in the article, uh, much more detail um, to understand and to follow along. But um, um, the uh, rebellion, this is a big one, big, big, big one. Rebellion <clears throat> against God is part of every fallen human heart. I repeat, rebellion against God is part of every fallen human heart. So it's both a condition and an action. Um, as a condition, remember the fall of mankind. Um, there's our sin nature that we've inherited from, from Adam, right? And it's also an action because um, through our sin nature, through, through you know what we think, uh, our words, what we say, and what we do, uh, sin matures and can and gives birth to death. Um, that's both it can be physical and especially spiritual death. In other words, eternal separation from God, right? That's um, also there from uh, uh, the letter of James, uh, chapter one fifteen, and sin is also lawlessness, right? One John three four, it's transgressing God's commands and falling short of His glory. So um, that's not where it ends, though, right? Sin goes even further. And I want you to understand, to help you to understand uh, that sin um, is much, much more. It goes further than this, right? Further than what we had just said. So sin is also is idolatry, um, um, you know, worshiping things, idols, objects. It could even be people. Um, it's worshiping false gods, right? And... It's also a form of adultery. Adultery? What is that? Does that mean? What does that mean? Well, adultery means lusting after other things or people as a source of satisfaction or purpose. And that's very, very important, along with the fact that sin is, uh, uh, it pollutes and it's rampant. In other words, it spreads uh, from, uh, from, you know, some people's uh, unrepentant hearts to others. So sin is the main problem we as people have. Sin is the main problem we have as people, as we're born sinners. And so it is only in the Bible that we can understand it and hereby then embrace the, um, the, um, the work Jesus did, the redemptive work Jesus did on the cross on our behalf. So... Okay, so why does sin matter? You know, why does why do, why does sin matter? What does the Bible tell us about the nature of sin? So because of our because of the fall, see, it was like slowly we're tying these things together. How these different pieces um, from the doctrines tie together, right? Remember the fall, um, the the tragedy in the Garden of Eden. Um, so through our human ancestors, Adam and Eve, um, <clears throat> they brought tragedy and curse into into the entire universe, basically, right? So there are practical um, consequences of sin. Um, consequences, you can also say effects of sin. And uh, some of them, not all, but these are some of the major ones, are that people are alienated from nature. People are alienated from God. And people are alienated from each other and from their own self, from their own being. So being alienated means um, that we get a sense we're not connected somehow to our emotions, feelings, and actions. Um, it's, 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 you can also call it self-alienation, right? We're not using um, you know, uh, psychological or, or, or psychiatric uh, theories or concepts here, just what the Bible tells us. So that is bad, right? If we're so alienated that we basically lose touch with ourselves, that's bad. And here's why. The reason for that is when we are unaware, when uh, uh, without an awareness of sin, right? Being self-alienated, we have four uh, problems. So 
the sin that we commit, that is sin by us, there is sin against us, that is uh, other people sinning against us, there is sin in the world, yeah, and on top of that there are the strategies of Satan, the devil. So let's look at, at those four parts briefly, sin by us, sin against us, sin in the world, and the strategies of Satan. So a sin by us um, is um, basically falsely believing that we're self-sufficient, right, in our own strength. The Bible tells us that everything we have <laughs> comes uh, from him, right? And God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But if we don't understand or embrace that tr truth, um, we'll try to, or people will try to be self-sufficient. In other words, doing things in our own strength and thinking that whatever we accomplish um, was uh, of our own doing apart from Christ. Right? So that's one thing. Another thing is uh, having a sense of entitlement. So these are very practical things to consider. And, um, you know, like um, something, like, I deserve better than this, or I deserve better than her or him or this person or that person, or just a sense of being entitled uh, that's also a uh, sin that uh, a part of our sins that we commit, and of course transgressing against God's laws, right? Not just the Ten Commandments, but um, just the um, the biblical precepts and um, basically what Jesus is uh, telling us and teaching us. So that so that's sin by us. Then there's sin against us, and sin against us, as we said, is uh, means that. That's what that's evil that others do against us. So, for example, when we grow up, there may be uh, situations or circumstances where our own like ba uh, boundaries as children, for example, may have been uh, violated in some form or another. Right? We have not uh, had the opportunity, um, you know, to grow up uh, having proper boundaries with with ourselves, with our parents, with other people. And uh, sometimes even that is true too. Uh, that they may have been violated, right? That we've they have may have been, you know, abuse against us in any which form or another. And um, those are all things where boundaries have been um, broken, and um, that is sin uh, committed against us. And um, uh, what happens then is too is that we um, people then may have, you know, we have a false perception of other people. We may not even consider people as being people. Um, what it means is like sometimes people are reduced to um, um, numbers or cases or statistics. And that is not, uh, that is false. That is a false perception. Um, um, and that is sin that can be committed against us as well. Right? All right, you get that? So... That's not what the Bible teaches us. For us, the Bible, every person is valuable in Jesus' sight. Every person has value. And um, so uh, that's why Jesus died on the cross, to atone for our sins, to express for one the, the value of uh, human life as he was then resurrected to promise us eternal life and then uh, also um, his best life in the here and now through the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So, um, yeah, so that's basically uh, sin uh, against us. Then there is sin in the world, right? So sin in the world is part of the, um, if you go right back to the um, uh, our creation, um, the doctrine of creation and how God created things, um, uh, he created everything to work in harmony and in sync. So, Natural disasters, catastrophes, what we think think of earthquakes or whatever. But God had cursed the ground, and so all these are um, results of the fall, right? So natural disasters that happen can happen to anybody, you, me, and anybody. And catastrophes, they're all results of the fall. That is uh, the rebellion uh, of Adam and Eve against God. Um, we can also see that in the pain and suffering of others that appears often that for no apparent reason other people suffer, 
right? And I want you to just consider that um, there's some Bible verses in the article uh, that accompanies this uh, session. Please do have a look at the Bible verses that um, reveal more um, about this. Um, so everything about us and in the world by default is uh, corrupted and broken. You can see that in Psalm 51 verse 5, the Bible tells us that. All right. And four, lastly, right, this is a big one. This is a big one. These are the strategies of the devil. Remember Satan, the enemy? Uh, Satan is God's enemy. Satan is our enemy as people. So unfortunately, sometimes when someone says, oh, I don't believe, you know, that the devil exists. Oh, yeah? No? Don't believe that? Anyone who claims that has already lost the battle um, because Satan is real. He's, he's a fallen angel, as we had already talked about. So um, just for, for starters, we have to understand the strategies of the devil. We must acknowledge Satan as a, um, as a fallen angelic being in the spiritual realm, which is there. And uh, we have to um, acknowledge that he is, uh, he is there. So the Bible helps us to, uh, to understand that Satan is real, active, and uh, his main goal is to destroy our relationship with God, as he did in the Garden of Eden. Eden, right? Our relationship with God, he wants to destroy that, our relationship with others, other people, and with ourselves. That's all in Genesis 3. So Satan is a, 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 a very powerful enemy um, who cannot be um, overcome on our own strength. So Satan uses some tactics, right? He accuses people, right? He's also called the accuser, the tempter. He tempts us to do things. Uh, oh, and he also sifts us, right? And sifting is keeping us away uh, uh, from other people, uh, for, foremost from um, fellow believers, and um, that way to deter to interfere with God's personal plan for us. So it's all destructive. Everything that the enemy does, Satan wants to do. But his number one goal for us as believers is to uh, destroy, or to interfere at least. He can't, he can't uh, because we're sealed through the Holy Spirit, um, we cannot um, lose our salvation. Um, but we can be tempted and he can cause... Uh, us to do, uh, not cause, but we, we through our own will, give in to temptation. And so we can be um, doing uh, bad things to other people. Um, we may not even be aware of it, right, for example. But it's the Holy Spirit then that who helps convict us um, uh, and convinces us, oh, I did something wrong or I, 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 I hurt this person or I did evil in some form or another. And then we repent Immediately we turn to Jesus, we confess and repent, and uh, um, Jesus uh, cleanses us and helps us with that. So, which again, as, as we said before, doesn't mean that's an invitation to a sin. We're not, you know, we're, we're not sinless, but, uh, you know, with God's help, we, we, we do sin less to us, right? Very important one here. Let's consider this one. Every person who has ever attempted to engage or fight against the devil on their own, in their own strength, apart from Jesus Christ, has failed. Everyone. I'll repeat that. It's so important. Every person who has ever attempted to engage or fight against the devil, that is Satan, on their own, in their own strength, has failed. Everyone. This is where Jesus comes in. Jesus Christ is the only one who did not fail. Jesus won uh, the complete victory over Satan. And that is the bottom line here. That's important to remember. That is what the Bible reveals. And one of the reasons God has given us the Bible um, to tell us this. Right? It sounds very simple and straightforward in any way it is. But it's important because God loves us. Jesus loves us. That's why he's given us um, the Bible to reveal, um, you know, what how the enemy operates, uh, and how Jesus has overcome uh, sin, Satan, death, devil, right? So, so those are, those are just uh, 
short summary here, the four different sin problems that we just mentioned, they stand all in, in opposition to God's desire of him reconciling us to himself and God's people, fellow believers. So, yeah, that's a lot. We just want to we'll take a short breather here. All right, a lot to digest here. Okay, good. So there's two more things, two more aspects we want to consider uh, about sin, which are often misunderstood, or some people may misrepresent them. And so these are, this is uh, original sin, or what is called original sin, and transmission of sin. So original sin is not the very first sin committed by Adam and Eve, right? Original sin is not the very first sin committed by Adam and Eve. Original sin is the consequences of that first sin. So we are not sinners because we sin, but we sin because we are sinners. We are not sinners because we sin, but we sin because we are sinners, right? Due to our broken sin nature. Um, so this is where Jesus reminds us um, that it is God who calls us to himself. Um, uh, we can read that. And that's the correct biblical view, um, is that we cannot turn to God in our own strength. And I'm going to read a Bible verse here um, to you. And So again, important. Um, we cannot turn to God in our own strength. So here's a verse from Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. It reads, As the scriptures say, No one is righteous not even one no one is truly wise no one is seeking god god bless the reading of his word all right get it so nobody of us uh, you me anybody in our own strength apart from christ uh, has anything good about them or something that can be redeemed um, it's all about um, jesus all right so um what about the transmission of sin so there are um, the transmission of our sin nature is basically our guilt before God. So um, Adam, we've we've inherited that sin nature, and so we um, we are uh, by default under God's wrath, and because we've sinned, uh, Adam, um, all of humanity suffers uh, the aftermath of Adam's sin. No, so the idea was that God, um, the idea was, or God's plan was, uh, giving Adam and Eve, um, you know, free will, and the idea was f that God perfectly had selected Adam to represent mankind, yeah, to be the representative of uh, human beings. So, um, just as Jesus then, uh, just as God had selected Jesus to re represent. Um, uh, the elect is elect, that is, believers, Christians. Um, that is why we, the reason we talk about Jesus being the second Adam, or, or also the last Adam, right? Because uh, Jesus is a representative as part of the new covenant, right? So there are, there are um, different, co different uh, covenants, right? I'm not going to go into more detail here that it's on the article. I, I encourage you to read that. Um, but it is the covenant of redemption you want to look at. Uh, it's a divine co covenant that God makes uh, for us and on our behalf, um, which is an eternal agreement, uh, including God and the people he will redeem um, with Christ as mediator. All right. So uh, that's something we want to consider. And here's a verse there for... Uh, for you also, I'm going to read it. It's from Hebrews uh, chapter 9, verse 15. And that is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people, so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. 
For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under that first covenant. God bless you, English word. So you can read this in the New Testament. And it is Christ who is the, um, the uh, mediator as part of the covenant of redemption. Right? So we're going to um, look in the article. It's explained a bit further there too. Good. So a lot going on here, right? But that's that was all about sin and why it matters. Um, it's a short break here before we turn to uh, salvation. All right, so we're moving from sin to salvation. So what is salvation? What is repentance and why does it matter? What is salvation? What is repentance and why does it matter? So before we understand salvation, right, we have to understand uh, what we just looked at, sin, um, and the uh, nature of sin. Um, basically, just as a short recap, is we cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. All right? So that's, that's the important part of the sin problem we have. So with salvation, um, we um, look at the, um, uh, we want to explore what salvation means, what Jesus does, right? And, and in all of this, we want to understand uh, uh, the significance and necessity of repentance. Repentance is very, very important. So just briefly here, uh, salvation is the deliverance from sin's power and its effects through God's intervention. I repeat, salvation is, is the deliverance from sin's power and effects through God's intervention. Repentance means turning away from sin with a change of heart and behavior. All right? So with a changed heart, with a heart bent towards Jesus Christ, we understand the need for uh, Jesus. <laughs> To him and work in and through us and that's why we repent we say lord jesus i can't do anything in my own strength i need your help i repent of my sins and and please help me with uh, um, living my life with a change of heart and behavior um, that's basically repentance generally being sorry not saying you know pretending or so but no no but being generally sorry and so um, there's a change of heart and behavior and Jesus helps us um, to um, with that in, in our walk of faith with him um, right so what, what we want to find out is what does the Bible tell us about confessing our sins how does this all work together and how does that all fit in with repentance and salvation so we have sins sin Repentance and repentance and salvation. So the uh, question thereafter is then: How can we have and grow in a personal relationship with Christ? All right. That's so. Those are what we're going to be looking at here. So here's a here's a passage from the Bible, from the Gospel of Luke, um, which can help us find answers to these questions. Right, you ready? We're in the Gospel of Luke now, and uh, it's a little bit longer. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. I'll read. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man named, there, named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, 
Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. God bless the reading of his word. Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. Wow. So this is a passage. Um, the passages we sometimes have or use, we call them uh, pericopes. It's just selections. So like we select passages that are, you know, belong together in a context. And so in this pericope, uh, in this passage, uh, we have a demonstration of all the basic concepts um, just mentioned um, that help us point uh, out what salvation is all about. So, first, it is Jesus who calls us to himself, since he knows us all by name, right? Verse 5, right? It is Jesus who calls us to himself, since he knows us all by name. You, me, everybody. He created us, so he knows everybody by name. Jesus also knows that Zacchaeus is not only a, uh, uh, well, prominent, notorious, if you want to say that, chief tax collector, but also that he's seeking him. This is the important part. Um, tax collectors at the time were despised by um, their fellow uh, Hebrew Israelite people because they were collecting taxes on behalf of the Romans, the Roman oppressors at the time. So um, Zacchaeus was, is a chief tax collector, so one of the leading tax collectors. And what is important here is that Jesus knows that Zacchaeus is seeking after him. All right, so uh, like like Zacchaeus, all of us are to confess our sins to Jesus and to Jesus only. Um, that's in one John one verses eight to nine, right? So we confess our sins like Zacchaeus does, and to Jesus, and um, at the same time, turning away from sin with a repentant heart, and we see that so wonderfully expressed here. Um, Jesus who sees um, that Zacchaeus is truly repentant, nothing else stands in the way. And um, just as Jesus sees our hearts today, all of the hearts of every person, um, Jesus affirms then that salvation has come in uh, verse 9. So um, here's a big one. So we realize here, this is a really, really big one. So uh, we realize here that faith in Christ, that is confessing and repenting our sins, begin and are finalized through Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. I repeat that. So um, when we um, confessing and repenting our sins begins with being uh, convicted. It is the Holy Spirit already working in and through us in our hearts. So it is already Jesus Christ. We're going to look at the Holy Spirit uh, just la uh, later uh, in another in another segment then uh, um, another doctrine um, but it is through Jesus who begins our, our walk of faith and finalizes it it's very important uh, it's in Hebrews 12 verse 2 he's Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith and so again it is important to understand that um, in our own strength we can do nothing so Jesus himself already calling us uh, to confession and repentance um, is a great um, um, uh, burden that, he, that, he, that Jesus takes off of us because he knows we're, through, through our broken sin self we can't do anything in our strength. So Jesus knows all of our hearts and, and he also knows who's generally repentant and, uh, and as we acknowledge our need for Christ um, whom he calls to himself and salvation, right? So that's very important to understand. So um, keep in mind, though, that salvation is available only in and through Jesus. That is the uh, the doctrine of salvation teaches us too. The Bible tells us that too. Jesus tells us that. And um, so basically Jesus calls us um, to come to him freely with open surrendered humble and repentant hearts um, similar to Zacchaeus we just read so here's another verse for you which I encourage you uh, 
uh, to consider. And Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary, carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. God bless the reading of his word. This is Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. Isn't that awesome? God bless the reading of his word. So basically, we understand the, um, uh, we had an overview of sin, the sin problem we all have, and we're born with it. And so um, it is Jesus who provides salvation for anyone who comes to him with a truly repentant heart. Jesus and Jesus only. And that's, that's what Jesus is after. Uh, it was said before, I said it before, but, you know, Jesus doesn't care about status and wealth and, you know, good deeds, anything apart from him. He wants, he's after a heart uh, bent towards him. All right, so that's that's important to keep in mind and understand. And um, so it's all, it's a matter of the heart. All right, as we see with Zacchaeus and that wonderful example there too. So... Good, so there's a link in the video description too with an in-depth article which you can access, learn all more about this. Um, there's a whole lot more. There's a glossary to help you understand everything we covered, sin and salvation. And there's a bit more what we didn't cover, such as what conversion means, okay? What does it mean to be converted? Or what does conversion mean? So what it is and what it is not. And uh, that's important to understand. It's in the article and some other useful terms. All right. So good. Very important. Um, as we move on now, we're going uh, coming to the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And there's a little homework here for you to to consider and do. Is to open your Bible, go to the Gospel of John. I, I pray. I hope you've already read the Gospel of John at least once. And go to chapters uh, 14 to 16 and see what you can find out about the Holy Spirit. Jesus announces him there, right? Also check out Romans, uh, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 8, 26 to 27. And Galatians, chapter 5, 16 to 25. Um, so see what Paul has to say about him, the, the, the person and power of the Holy Spirit. So, okay, so that's John chapters 14 to 16, uh, John chapters 14, 15, 16, Romans 8, 26 to 27, and Galatians chapter 5, 16 to 25. All right, we're just going to end with prayer. All right. So, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for this blessed day and also learning more about sin and salvation. Uh, why it matters, what sin is, and also thank you for the salvation you have provided through what you did and accomplished on the cross on our behalf. We're grateful for all of this. Uh, may we never take anything for granted. We, we just want to thank you for um, everything you did, something we could never do and can never do in our own strength. And um, so we just want to thank you for these blessings and revealing all these truths to you um, in the Bible, also how it all works together. Um, sin, Satan, death, devil, right? We, uh, Satan is the devil and uh, um, how his, uh, um, his goal ultimately is to deceive people and to, um, to cause people um, to tempt them into rebellion against you, Lord Jesus. And that's what we pray that not be pray that everybody turns to you while there's still time. Lord Jesus, through saving faith, understanding who you are as our person, Lord and Savior, as God in the flesh, who atoned for our sins on the cross. And that's a prayer for today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we love you and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And always remember, the best Bible is an open Bible. Please join again soon.